my people, it's your buddy Tack. Well, today it finally happened to me. Oh, I was having such a good day too. As you see by the title, I got my first squib load. I've been shooting how long? I'm 49, I've been shooting over 40 years. Never had this happen. <clears throat> was it one of your hand loads, Tack? Yes, it was, but let hear me out. Man, I've been reloading I don't know how long. Almost that long, or probably like 40 years I've been reloading. This was the thing, okay. So I'm out there doing some testing with the TRR8 through 57 revolver. It's going great, bam, bam, man. I'm starting to get the accuracy down. The one group I had was like 0.4 of an inch at 15 yards. So they were all freaking touching like that three round group. I was like, oh my God, that's the one right there. And that was with a, uh, I usually use H110, which does really good, but this was Winchester 296 with uh, Winchester brass and 15.8 grains of it. So, with a 140 grain uh, Lehigh Defense. Solid copper, right? Bam, bam, shooting, everything's going great. Last bullet. Pew! It went off, and it wasn't super quiet, but it was way more quiet. And the, the rest, you know, you see a fireball, almost every bullet. So as soon as that happened, like squib load. I've seen it happen to other people. It's never technically happened to me. I've had worse happen to me or with the PPQ, whatever. <laughs> so as soon as I look in there, yep, it's like that far down the barrel. Okay, even before I try it, let's go on YouTube. Even though I know how to do it, let's watch some people just in case there's a trick. Oh, just hammer it out, boom, boom, with a little, you know, rod. Oh, it falls right out. Yeah, okay. Even before I tried, I put oil down there and stuff. Let it get wet. I wanted to lubricate stuff. Frickin' revolver, you can't go from this way, you know, to go with the bullet. You have to go the other way. And it was almost halfway down. Now, there was gunpowder in it. This is what was weird. As soon as I looked at that brass, the powder, that there was some still in there, and it was like brown. It almost looked like the powder magically got wet somehow in that one bullet. Now look at the primer, primer strike next to all the other ones. Status quo, it looks right. So I don't know what happened. I freaking don't know. So I got uh, one of those cleaning rods, one of the regular ones, right? So I'm centering it in the barrel and I'm trying not, I don't want to hit the grooves or nothing, right? Screw up your barrel. And I'm hitting it, hitting it with a rubber mallet. Finally, I'm like, screw that, give me a real hammer. Ting, ting, I start bending the freaking pole and I don't think the damn bullet moved. You know, I kept gauging it, how far it's in there and seeing, it, and it didn't really move. Oh, just go on YouTube, just tap it out, falls right out. Nope, not this thing, because it's me. So, of course, it's got to be worse. So, in those Lehigh Defense solid coppers, I don't know if that has something to do with it. And solid copper bullets. <laughs> uh, the thing with the PPQ, that was a solid copper, but it was one of those barns with the super giant hollow point. So, it was a lot bigger for the weight. You know what I'm saying? So, increase the pressures. But yeah, I couldn't get this. I know I had one beer, but I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to the gun store, dropping this off now, because I'm pissed. Instantly shot down there, handed it to him. He's like, oh, let me, I'll try it real quick. I hear in the background, ding, 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 ding. I'm like, yo, he's beating the hell out of it. Hey, yeah, you got to do it right. And he goes back, he didn't get it out. So he put some more penetrating oil, and he said, let me let it sit, and then we'll work on it. If not, it's going back to Smith & Wesson. And man, I hope I did not mess up the barrel, because then I'll have to get a new fucking barrel for it. Excuse my French. At least with the TRR-8, it's that sleeve. You know, it's like the barrel's covered with the sleeve, so it's just the inside I'd have to replace. But I don't have the tool to take that apart. It's got to go to Smith. Man, I was having such a great freaking day, too. And then as soon as I wanted to leave, I couldn't find my keys. So now I'm really spazzing. My gun's messed up. I can't find my keys. But <laughs> it's at the gun shop now. It's at the doctor's now. So we'll see what happens. And anybody that doesn't know, a squib load 
well, you can tell by the sound because it's like poop instead of bang. You know, it's a, it's way wimpier. As soon as you hear that, stop what you're doing. Stop, unload, check. You know, usually I keep it down range a couple seconds just in case, I don't know, whatever. And then I take it down, look, yup, there she is. Stop shooting immediately. You shoot a second bullet, that's when your gun goes kablooey. Or you could at least destroy stuff, if not yourself. So be careful of squib loads. It doesn't sound right, stop what you're doing right there. And that's what I did. It was the last bullet, but as soon as it went off, I'm like, squib load. Never had one, but you frickin' you know it when you hear it. So be careful out there. It's a little PSA by your man, Tack. As always, I hope you guys are doing good. And until the next time we meet.